Here we're going to find exact polar forms of complex numbers and we need those for finding roots and powers using De Moira's theorem to find exact values of those. On our argand plane, if we take a complex number in a rectangular form, it is a in the real dimension and b in the perpendicular imaginary dimension and we can convert that to polar form by taking the distance from the origin, r, our modulus, and the angle from our right horizontal axis in the anticlockwise dimension, our theta, our argument. If k is a positive real number, then it has no imaginary part, and it will lie on the horizontal axis to the right of the origin. So that's k distance from the origin and no angle from that axis. Or if we go all the way around, we could also write it as k distance and one complete loop of 2 pi. If we have a positive imaginary number, then that can be written in the form of a real times i, and that will be in the vertical axis above the origin. That has no real component, and it's pi over 2, a quarter of the way around our 2 pi radians. A negative real number will lie to the left of the origin on the real axis no imaginary part, and is k distance from the origin, and pi degrees. Note that this, anywhere along this line, gives us a negative number. But the negative number is not represented in the modulus, which remains positive. It's represented in the argument. The pi generates the negative. The modulus must always stay a positive value. If we have a negative imaginary number, that will lie below the axis on the imaginary line, and that will be k, but it's 3 pi over 2, 3 quarters of the way around our 2 pi radians. Again, the negative is included in the argument, not in the modulus. An alternative way of looking at that, however, is to go back negative pi over 2, a quarter of our radians. However, this form is in general less good than the positive version. So, if our number is a entirely real or imaginary number, then it can be represented as some multiple of pi over 2 times the modulus. But there are other exact values as well. The simplest is when we have a value where the distance along the real and imaginary axes are the same. So if they are k across and k up, then the multiple along that axis is root 2 k. So it's root 2 k at 45 degrees because we've got a right angle, not such a triangle. But we don't write 45 degrees. That is a quarter of the way to pi, so is pi over 4. Our modulus, which can be written in terms of k, and our argument, which excludes the k. Or, in the other quadrants, we use the same logic minus k across, ki up, is 3 quarters of the way to pi. In the bottom left quadrant, both negatives, that is 5, 4 pi. Note that's still better than going in the negative dimension. When we do De Marvel's theorem, we're better to stay in the positives. And in the bottom right quad quadrant, that's 7 over 4 minus a quarter pi if you were going in a negative way. So in that way we can write exact values even when we don't have the number we can still find the ratio to 
find using Pythagoras some ratio of our k and the argument is exact because the angle relates to how the real and imaginary components work as well as the 45 degree triangles we should also watch for ones where the imaginary and real components are under a ratio of 1 to root 3. These are from 90, 60, 30 triangles or as we should think of them pi over 2, pi over 3 and pi over 6. They arise because if you take a 2 by 2 by 2 equilateral triangle then each angle is 60 degrees which is pi over 3 and if we halve that then the component along the bottom is half of 2 which is 1 and the vertical component must be root 3. 2 squared is 4 minus 1 leaves us with root 3 as being the vertical component using Pythagoras. Since this is pi over 3 and our angle is halved then our upper angle is pi over 6. Fortunately for you this particular ratio is given on our formula sheet so you don't have to remember it. The ratio of 1 to root 3 is pi over 3 and pi over 6 is given but you do need to recognize it when you see it. Let's do some examples. Here's a simple one, it's 1 across root 3 up. So since it's further up than it is across we're going to suspect that's 60 degrees pi over 3. The modulus is 3 squared plus 1 squared squared, so that's 2. But we also have to look for hidden versions. If we get one, say, that's root 3 minus 3i, then we have to recognize that that is the ratio 1 to root 3 multiplied by root 3. So we see that one, we know we can do exact values. We have a distance around that is 5 pi over 3, that's 2 pi minus pi over 3, and the modulus is root 3 squared plus 3 squared, 3 plus 9 square root is square root 12. Final example, if we have one like this, we can see using our thirds that a 2 comes out of the root 12. So this is minus 2 times, and here it is again, our ratio of root 3 to 1. In this case, it's further across than it is down, so we must suspect that this angle in here is 30 degrees, pi over 6, and the answer is that it is 12 squared plus 2 squared square root is 4, and our angle is 7 pi over 6. really important that you recognize what the axis values are because you can't do fractions of them unless you recognize them. The positive real axis is 0, the positive imaginary axis is pi over 2, the negative real axis is pi and the negative imaginary is 3 pi over 2 and that brings us around back to 2 pi at 0. In between, we need to look for the ratio of 1 to 1 as our 45 degrees and 1 to root 3 as our ratio for our pi over 3, pi over 6.